Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next problem from, the, from a past JE advanced test, and it deals with surface tension. Now, normally, surface tension is not a particularly difficult topic, and it's easily solved. However, this one is a little tricky because it involves something that you normally don't see in a course on surface tension. So, let's explore what we have here. We're starting with a very large drop, a drop that has a radius of 2 centimeters, so it's a really big drop. Wow, that looks like the size of a ping pong ball. So yes, that would be a very big drop. And now the drop subdivides itself into a certain number, let's call it n equally sized smaller drops, a whole bunch of them, so that the radius being 2 centimeters before now drops to a very small radius r. The question is, you don't know how many of those drops are formed. But they do tell us that if the change in the energy is equal to 10 to the minus 3 joules, being going from here to here, then n would be 10 to the alpha, and we're supposed to find the value of alpha. Alpha is going to be a number between 1 and 9. It's going to be an integer between 1 and 9. All right, so how to start with that? Well, first of all, the surface tension was given to us. The surface tension is equal to 0.1 newtons per 4 pi meters. All right, if that's the surface tension, then the energy per unit area will be given as 0.1 joules per 4 pi meters squared. So this is a conclusion from knowing the surface tension. If the surface tension is 0.1 newtons per 4 pi meters squared, then the energy per unit area is 0.1 joules per 4 pi meters squared. If you don't know that, then you're totally stuck on this problem. All right, so once you realize that's the case, now we realize that there's a big change in the energy. The energy changed by 10 to the minus 3 joules. So the question is, well, how much energy did that big drop have to begin with? All right, let's try that. So energy initial per unit area is going to be equal to the surface tension, which is, well, converted to these units, which is 0.1 joules per 4 pi meters squared. And of course, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that times the, energy, uh, times the area to just get the energy. So we're going to multiply this times the area, which is 4 pi times the radius squared. Now, of course, we know what the radius is, the radius. Well, first of all, the 4 pi cancels out, and the radius squared can be replaced by 0 0.02 meters squared. So when we multiply this out, we get 10 to the minus 5 joules. So that's the initial energy state, 10 to the minus 5 joules, and then the energy changes to 10 to the, by 10 to the minus 3 joules. So the amount of energy gained or lost is huge compared to the initial energy state. So now, the next thing we need to do is say, well, what's the ratio of the energy? And remember that the energy is simply a function of area. So if we take the energy per unit area, and we multiply that times the area, that gives us energy. So, which means we can find the ratio of the energy change. So what we can say is that the change in the energy divided by the original energy is equal to, well, the change would be 10 to the minus 3 joules divided by 10 to the minus 5 joules, which is equal to 100. That means the energy gained is 100 times the original energy. And yes, it's gaining energy. Naturally, drops will not go from a big drop into little drops, or would they? Hmm, I need to think about that. Well, probably not because it's an energy gain. It's probably the other way around. Little drops will coalesce into bigger drops. Big drops will not automatically turn into little drops because after all, we have a tremendous energy gain by going to the little drops. So it's not a natural process. But anyway, let's continue on. Okay, so we know that the change in energy to the original energy is 100 to 1. And we know that the energy is a function of the area, which means that the area changes 100 to 1. That means the, the area final is equal to 100 times the area initial. Because that's the way you can gain energy, by having more surface energy. A surface area, by taking a big drop and converting them into little drops, you end up with a larger surface area, therefore more energy. Okay, 
So let's write the equation. So what we can do here is the final, the final area is going to be n number. We have n number of little drops times 4 pi r squared. So that's the area of each little drop, and we have n of them. And that will be 100 times the original area, which is going to be 4 pi times big R squared. Then we realize we have 4 pi on each side. That cancels out. So now we realize that the number of drops that are going to be created from the big drop is going to be equal to 100 times r squared divided by little r squared. And so that's our first realization. That's how many little drops we're going to end up, end up with. Let me rewrite that. That's a terrible little r. There we go. But we don't know what the little r will be equal to. So we need to find another relationship between big R and little r. And the relationship is that the volume can change. We can say that the original volume must equal the final volume. The original volume is going to be 4 thirds pi big R cubed. And the final volume is going to be n times, because that's how many little drops we have, times 4 thirds pi little r cubed. That's a cube right there. All right, again, the 4 pi, the 4 thirds pi cancels out. And so we can say that n can also be described as being a big R cubed over little r cubed. So now we have two relationships between n. We have n equals 100 r squared over little r squared, and we have n equals to this. So if we now plug this value for n in here. We set the two equations equal to each other. So now we have r cubed divided by little r cubed is equal to 100 times r squared divided by little r squared. And notice that this r squared cancels out two of those. This cancels out two of those. So we see that the ratio of big R over little r is equal to 100. So now we know the size of the little drops in radius will be 1 100 the size of the big drop. Now that we know that, now we can come up with a relationship. Now we can go back to here. We can say that n is equal to big R cubed divided by little r cubed, which is equal to r over r quantity cubed. And we know that the ratio is equal to 100, so the number of drops is equal to 100 cubed, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the 6th, or simply 10 to the 6th, n. And we also know that n is equal to 10 to the alpha. And so finally, what we're looking for, we're looking for the value of alpha, and therefore alpha is equal to 6. And that is the correct answer for that particular problem. So again, let's go through it simply. We're given the surface tension, and from that you should also be able to say that the energy per unit area contained within that drop, because the surface tension is an equal number of joules per square meter. So whatever we have here is a surface tension, it's that many joules per square meter for the energy per unit area. Then we can see that the original energy, by multiplying the energy per unit area of the big drop times the area, gives us the original energy contained within the big drop. Then we can see the ratio of the change in energy, which is given, divided by the original energy, which is 100 to 1. So there's a hundredfold increase in the energy. And since we know that the energy, energy, and where am I here? Let me see. Yeah, that the energy is simply a function of the area. That means if we have 100 times the energy, we have 100 times the surface area. So we know the surface area final is 100 times the original surface area. And we know that we have n number of small drops equals, oh yeah, equals 100 times the original area. I was lost there for a moment. So we have this equation right here. This is the total area of the small drops. We have n number of them. Now we know n is a million times the area of each drop. That's equal to 100 times the area of the original drop. So we have a relationship for n. n is 100 times r squared over little r squared. But we still don't know what n is. But then we realize the volume can change. 
So the volume of the original drop is n times the volume of every small drop. So we also know that n is this ratio. So if n is this ratio, n is that ratio, we simply set that equal to each other. Now we realize that r, big R over little r is 100. That means the radius of the big drop is 100 times the radius of the small drop. And then we can plug that back in our equation right here. So we have 100 cubed. We know that n now is 10 to the 6. There's a million drops. So therefore the exponent is equal to 6. And that is how it's done. Is there a reason for it's 100 both for volume and for area? Is there a, is there a correlation at all? Uh, no. Remember that area is 100 to 1 because it's 100 times as much energy, so therefore there's 100 times as much surface area. But volume-wise, the volumes are the same. They have to be the same. So the volume of the million drops add up to the volume of the big drop, but the surface area will be 100 to 1. Yeah.